the Kangaroo Rat Pack, written by Gia Lucy. The chair tipped, his arms flailing to the side, and Carter Kempmeyer fell off his chair. Lying beside his desk with his hands over his ears, he howled, What's that noise? Carter was always cracking jokes and doing ridiculous things to make people laugh. Once, he brought a bullfrog to music class, insisting it sing in the choir. The frog got loose and jumped onto the teacher's head. The children laughed hysterically, and Carter was sent to the principal's office again. Nate was Carter's best friend. Every day he tried to help Carter pay attention and finish his schoolwork, but today that was impossible. He watched as Carter freaked out. Doesn't anyone else hear that drumming? At recess, Carter bolted straight to the custodian's tool shed. He grabbed a shovel, then dashed to the field where he thought the noise was coming from. Dirt flew in all directions as Carter dug giant holes looking for the source of the noise. A crowd gathered around him. Carter didn't seem to notice. Nate tried to make excuses for his friend. Don't worry about him, he joked. He was raised by gophers. Everyone laughed. There, shouted Carter, and he pointed towards one of the holes. Balanced on hind feet and a long tail stood a creature that looked like a cross between a mouse and a kangaroo. He was plump, round and only two inches tall. He had a mouthful of seeds, tiny ears, and he stared at Carter with eyes as big as saucers. What is that? Carter asked. It's a kangaroo rat, Nate exclaimed. A what? asked Willa. Come on, you're making that up. I could prove it, defended Nate. He sprinted to his locker, then raced back to the field with a book. Look, it looks just like him, said Nate, pointing to his book. Just then, the kangaroo rat started bouncing from side to side, burying his face in his fur. What's he doing, asked Carter. I think he is trying to conserve water. Nate read aloud from his book. Kangaroo rats don't drink water. Instead... They get water from the seeds they eat. They do all kinds of crazy things to keep from getting dehydrated, like breathing into their fur, making their home underground, and living nocturnally. Suddenly, the kangaroo rat stopped bouncing and without warning spit his mouthful of seeds onto Willa's brand new shoes. This sent her screaming. Addressing the children, he said, Hello. I'm Sir Bernard Doombar, but you could call me Bernard. I have been sent by my king to ask for help. We need to find a new place to live. The kids stared at the tiny talking creature. Amazed, Carter approached the animal and asked, Why do you need to find a new place to live? Where did you come from? Was it you who was making that noise? Bernard listened to all of Carter's questions and then explained that his family had to leave their home because the school was building a sports track over their burrow. The construction had buried their den and killed all the plants that provided them with seeds to eat. Let me show you something, said Bernard, as he hopped off towards the coastal sage scrub habitat that bordered the playground. There, tractors and bulldozers were hard at work flattening the dunes and pulverizing everything in sight. Under that bush was our burrow. My family and I have lived there since the school first opened, said Bernard. We chose the spot for our home because the sand was easy for us to tunnel. There were lots of seed-bearing plants and the walls around the field protected us from predators. It's going to be hard to find a new home that is as good as this one, sighed Bernard. We are already endangered and facing extinction. I was drumming my feet to call the other kangaroo rats for help. I'm so sorry, Bernard, 
said Kylia as the tears streamed down her face. Bernard forced a smile. Don't be sad. Life is full of changes. We must adapt in order to survive. And that means I must find my family a new place to live. Carter Kepmeyer at your service. My friends and I are going to help you. How can we help? We're just kids, asked Kylia. Yeah, why are you making promises like that? shouted Willis, still sitting a safe distance from the rodent who ruined her shoes. But Carter knew that just because he was a kid, it didn't mean he couldn't make a big difference. He had to find a way to persuade his friends to help Bernard. Come on, guys. Don't you remember our field trip to the beach? We worked together to free that pelican from the fishing net. If we work together now, I bet we could help save Bernard's home so he won't have to find a new place to live. Who's with me? We are! shouted the kids. I think the bell rang, said Nate, as he checked his watch. We are late. Oh no, here comes Mrs. Rutherford, panicked Willa. Mrs. Rutherford was a stout lady. She was a tough teacher, but always fair. The kids knew that they were in trouble when they saw her. What's going on here, she demanded. Before Carter could open his mouth, Bernard took a colossal leap forward and said, Don't be mad. It's my fault they're late. They were only trying to help me. Mrs. Rutherford jumped. Her eyeballs popped out and she screamed. Bernard, thinking it was a game, jumped too, which only made Mrs. Rutherford freak out more. Finally, when she realized that he was only playing, a smile spread across her face. Did this animal speak to me, or am I losing my mind, inquired Mrs. Rutherford. Carter introduced Bernard and explained everything. Mrs. Rutherford exhaled a sigh of relief and asked, So how are we going to help? I have an idea, said Nate. He pulled a newspaper clipping from his book. Check this out. Some students in Japan build a natural habitat to save the Daruma frogs that lived at their school. They formed a club to teach people about the frogs and how to protect them. We could do the same thing. We can stop the construction of the sports track and build a habitat for the kangaroo rats instead. I love it, said Mrs. Rutherford. Let's do it, agreed all the kids, except Tank. Tank Turnkowski was a school bully. He was huge, mean, and mowed down anyone who got in his way. I hate the idea, he said. I want a sports track. Who cares about a scrawny little rat anyway? Bernard looked straight into the eyes of the bully. He puffed up his chest and stood his full two inches tall. He wasn't going to let a bully ruin his plans. When he looked over his shoulder and saw that his new friends were ready to help, he felt even more brave. Wait! shouted Kylia. Why can't we have a sports track and save Bernard's home at the same time? She pulled out the notepad and smelly markers that she always kept in her dress pocket and started drawing. We can make a natural habitat in the center of the sports track, Kylia exclaimed. She tore the page from her notebook and handed it to Nate. Interesting, Nate muttered. It's quite genius, actually. With a couple of modifications, this could work. Over the next few months, the students worked closely with the school to build the kangaroo rat habitat inside the sports track. Everyone helped, even Tank Turnkowski, who turned out not to be such a bad guy after all. He, along with Carter, Nate, and Kylia, founded the Kangaroo Rat Pack and vowed to protect all endangered species. Every Saturday, they give tours of the kangaroo rat's habitat and teach the importance of coexisting with animals. Every once in a while, Carter would hear the drumming noise again. But instead of going bonkers and falling off his chair, he smiles, knowing that Bernard and his family are talking to one another, probably making plans for a midnight picnic and sand bath.